Hi guys. So today's video is going to be my series review of the Red Rising trilogy by Pierce Brown. Just a heads up, even though I'm going to be talking about all three of the books, I'm not going to give anything away. So if you haven't even read the first one, no worries, I'm not giving any spoilers. Jumping right into it, this follows a man named Dara, who is part of the very far future in a society where everybody is broken up into different color groups. Every color serves a purpose. His group is the Reds and they are very oppressed and they are part of a working class group of people and they are essentially slaves. The highest group of people are the Gold, they're the ruling class, and Darrow, the story gets started when he essentially is set to infiltrate the Gold and try and break down the entire color system and free his people from oppression. The entire story is told from Darrow's point of view in first person, so initially the story starts off with a very black and white view of things. You have the reds, who he feels are good and wholesome, essentially, and then you get the golds, who he feels like are very consumed with glory and power and lots of things that aren't great. As the story progresses, though, Darrow starts to recognize that regardless of color group, people are people. They're all human beings and they're just a product of their society. They're a product of how they've been raised. And as a result, this creates some extremely, extremely complex characters. Because of the nature of this whole entire premise, there's also some really difficult themes. And by difficult, I just mean kind of tragic and depressing. There's a lot of war and elements of war. There's a lot of sacrifice and loss. And when we first meet Darrow, he, he doesn't feel like that those things, those sacrifices are worth trying to free his people. He just kind of wants to be content. He has people he cares about. He has a family and a wife and nephews and nieces and everything and he just wants to live and be content. I think often in film and movies and any kind of storytelling, it always feels like the idea of freeing people or defeating the bad guy outweighs the danger that sometimes going up against the antagonists actually puts on the people that the main character cares about and I thought that the book did such an amazing job of recognizing sometimes it's really difficult to go up against the bad guy when bad things might happen to the people you care about. This was especially true I thought in the very first book, especially part one of the first book, and it's honestly a something even for me I have to think about. Like what if I was in a society where I might have to try and go up against what seems like an impossible thing to take down and by doing so I'd put my family at risk. Would I bother or would I just be content and happy with the people that I love? Throughout the rest of the series there's also this idea of faith and a lack of it or losing your faith after witnessing so many terrible things, after having so many people that you've come to care about be gone. There's people that die in this book and you guys know. <laughs> I love when people die in books, even though it sounds really morbid, but it just has a sense of realism that stories where everybody lives and is happily ever after type things, that it just doesn't capture the same in those stories. And this gets really gritty, it gets really raw, and it shows the negative repercussions of a rising, of a rebellion. It also paints a very clear picture that just because you're going up against the enemy now, the enemy might feel evil, they might seem evil, but they currently do have order and is order better than the potential chaos that might come about by leading this rebellion. Because of a lot of these themes you can imagine that there's a good amount of violence in these books. Like I said people die and sometimes in like really graphic ways so there is a lot of violence. There's some really twisted dark stuff that happens. There is a little bit of torture in the book. I would say that the torture is not explicit but it's referenced so for anybody that has a hard time with that kind of stuff it is there. However, by having these violent things in the book, again, I think that it gives a sense of realism to the story, it gives a sense of realism to what war is like, and it gives weight to the reason why they don't want the golds to rule anymore. There's also a lot of action in the books. I would say in the first one, there's the least amount of action and there's the most emotional pool. Kind of, I don't know, this third one has a lot of emotional pull too, but the, the first one just strikes a chord with me and it's very emotional. And then there's a lot of action in the second one to the point where I think the second one could have benefited maybe with a little bit more of the emotional pull. And then this third one had an amazing combination of both of those things. It is so, so good. There's so much backstabbing and there's so much action. And then there's so much, there's so many moments where you just, you're just like super worked up. As for the writing itself, because it is told in first person, you get a lot of fragmented sentences, but it didn't bother me whatsoever. To me, that seemed more like what a person would actually think, how they might actually talk. So I think it worked really well. 
I do think though, and this isn't necessarily a negative thing, it's just kind of a thing to note, because we're contained to this one character in a massive world where people live on different planets and the moons of different planets, and it's gigantic. There, because we're contained to this one person, we only kind of scratch the surface of some of these other cultures, but we're told, and those cultures are referenced quite often, which every now and then makes it hard to follow. There's also so many different color groups that sometimes it's difficult to remember which color group the, each character belongs to. There's a lot of characters too, and so every now and then uh, you kind of have to think, wait a sec, sorry, who is this? And you have to flip. There's a thing in the front that tells you um, the color, the colors, it says mid and low colors and has notable characters. Sons of Ares, who are a rebellious group, and then the golds themselves. So there's a lot of people to remember, and on top of that, a lot of them have nicknames, which is like, they have their regular name, and then they have their nickname. So there's a lot of people, but if you guys are fans of epic fantasy or sci-fi books, probably won't be an issue for you at all. Overall, I don't think I can say enough good things about this series. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. I thought the first one was amazing. I thought actually that the second one wasn't as good as the first, but a lot of people would be flipped on that. A lot of people like the second more than the first one. And then I loved this third one. Like I said before, I thought it had such a perfect balance of everything. And the ending is so good. The last like chunk of pages is so fast paced. There's so much going on, edge of your seat type moments. And then the ending is very beautiful and it's just, it's really good. I don't want to tell you if it's good, if it's like happy or sad, because in a way that kind of ruins it, but I thought the ending was perfect. That being said, there is going to be a second trilogy of books that comes after the events of the first trilogy, and at first I wasn't sure how I felt about that because I thought that the ending was so great, but when I was looking up the synopsis and everything, I decided like, oh no, that's a, that's a great idea. I think that's going to be great also. But anyway, if you guys haven't read this book but want to, let me know that in the comments section down below. I know for me personally, science fiction usually isn't my thing. I don't really know why. There's something about things that take place in space and futuristic stuff that I'm just not as into, but I love the series. Definitely in my top five favorite series of all time. And if you guys have read it, let me know because I would love to geek out <laughs> with you guys about it. Also, great news for those of you that are fans of this trilogy. There is a movie in the works. Pierce Brown is, I think, writing a lot of the script and everything. So I'm curious, because there's going to be some kind of adaptation made, who do you guys think would play all the characters really well? Because I've seen a few posts out there for people that, you know, mostly for Severo, who's an amazing character, but I'm curious who you guys think would play every character. That's it though, guys. If you liked the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Click the little bell icon so you get notified when I post new videos, and check out some of my videos right over here. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you love this trilogy as much as I do, and I will see you guys later. Bye.